today we're going to show you how to build simple graphical user interfaces. However, before we get to that, let us revisit CMake and see how a larger project should be organized in order to take full advantage of CMake. So a quick recap for CMake. So if you have a large software project, it usually consists of many headers. These are your .h files and many source files if you are doing C++, a bunch of .cpp files. Compiling projects usually requires, you know, issuing many compilation commands. Uh, let's say you are doing it with G++. And in order to ease up on that, you can actually write a make file, for example, with the make utility. And in this make file, you can describe how each and every one of your source files should be compiled and how they should be assembled or linked into a project. Now, make files is up compilation, but they can be a pain to create because you have to describe all kinds of dependencies, all kinds of libraries, how they should be linked, etc. This becomes even a bigger pain if you are trying to create a project that should be compilable on Windows and Linux and other operating systems. So CMake is an open source software with which you can describe your project and now be able to automatically create a make file and then use this make file to actually compile your code. CMake uses a single file called cmakelist.txt and previously you have been introduced to this and you have seen a very simple cmakelist.txt. If you are building a larger project though, usually you wanna put your files into uh, various subdirectories in your project. So a very common way to do this in CMake would be to have under your project directory, a build directory, an include subdirectory, and a source or SRC subdirectory. In your main directory, you would place your cmakelist.txt file. In your include directory, you would place all your header files. And in the source directory, you would place all the source files that are required to build this project. So how do you do it at the end? Well, once you have set this up, you would switch to the build directory and invoke CMake. Since you are invoking CMake in this build directory and this CMake list file is in, the, in its parent directory, you would have to issue a CMake dot dot command in the build directory. If that's successful, then that is going to fill up your build directory with all kinds of stuff. Among them, you're going to have a make file. So now that you have a make file, you can issue the make command, and the make command is going to hopefully build an executable or a library out of your source files, out of your project. The nice thing is, in this structure, if you need a clean build, you can always just remove the build directory or rather be in the build directory and remove everything from the build directory, for example, with this command. So what is inside the cmakelist.txt file? These are rules on how to actually create make files. So you need to specify the version of CMake that you want to be using. For example, here we say that we need at least 2.6. You need to name your project you need to make CMake aware that now you actually have header files in a different directory. So we say include directories, and since we have that include subdirectory, we're just gonna say, oh, we're gonna have a bunch of our files in that include subdirectory. The next thing would be to tell CMake what kind of source files you have. You could do that with a comment, please ignore this hash mark in front of it, set sources, and then include all and each and every one of your source files, source global.cpp, source etc., main.cpp, etc. But if you know that your source directory only contains C++ files that are needed for your project, a simple, a more simple thing is to actually tell CMake to create a sources variable in this case that contains all the source files in the source directory, well, all the CPP files in the source directory. And then 
at the very end, we're going to tell CMake, oh, by the way, build a, a executable, and this executable should be called calculator because that's how I name my project, and it should include all of those sources files in order to build them. So with that, let's fire up the Pi and see how this would be done in real life. So I'm going to open a terminal window here. Terminal windows are our best friends on Linux systems, as you already know. And I already prepared something here in a directory called calculator. And if you look into this folder, you can see that everything is in just a single folder. Now we want to organize this nicely. So we want to put the source files into the source folder, the header files into the include folder, and we want to create a build folder. Let's do that. So we're going to create a build directory. Right now, that should be empty. We're going to create an include directory and move all our header files into this directory. We also want to create a source directory and move all of our C++ files into that source directory. There is one more source file here, and I'm going to explain that to you later. That's that calculator.glade file. So let me also move that into the source directory. OK, so now we have this structure. There is actually a cute little utility for uh, Linux called tree with which you can actually look at a tree structure and see where each and every one of those files is. Now, if you don't have this installed, you can install that by a sudo apt-get install tree command. I already have it installed, so to me it returns all fine. And if I now issue the tree command, you can actually see the directory structure just like we had it on the slide. So now the next thing for us to do is to actually look at the cmakelist.txt file. So I'm going to open that with gedit. Here we go. And you can see that it pretty much contains the same stuff we have seen on the slides. So we have minimum version, the name of the project. We are telling CMake, oh, by the way, now we have an include directory that you should consider when looking for header files. Uh, let's forget this for a little bit, this find package and, and this part. I'm going to explain that to you in just a little bit. And we are telling CMake, oh, by the way, our sources directory or our SRC directory, all the .cpp files are con considered sources. Then we say, oh, by the way, the calculator should be built out of all of these sources files. And I'm going to later on explain these three lines to you. One of them essentially just tells, uh, make that it should include additional libraries to the build and I'm going to explain these two lines later. So you see that there is a cmakelist.txt file. So if I want to now build this code, I'm just going to go to the build directory. This directory should be all empty. And now I'm going to invoke cmake Right? And this, the cmakelist.txt file is in its parent directory. That's why I'm putting the two dots there. And that is going to hopefully fill up this build directory with all kinds of files. Now you see, now I have a directory here. I have all kinds of stuff here. But most importantly, I have a make file. And since I have a make file, that kind of suggests that, hey, I can now build this project by issuing a make command. I'm issuing the make command, and you see all these nice, colorful building commands issued by the scripts that CMake generated. And I actually have an executable. There we go. 
calculator I can start that up since it's in this directory I'm gonna do dot slash calculator and here we go we have our little program it's actually a graphical user interface we're gonna go through this in just a little bit and I can now let's say add 10 and 20 together and hey the result is 30 okay so this is really the directory structure that you would want to be using for CMake. Now with that, let's go back to our PowerPoint and let's see what a graphical user interface is and how you should think about a graphical user interface. 